Then my time start when I start. Well, places like 
like Singapore and, and other countries around seem to be able to do it, so why can't we? That's all an answer. At present, we can't. Because the way that it works, it gets put up interest rates and that puts the exchange rate up. Yeah. Which is why it's as high as it is. But and then everybody else brings their money out of this country, <laughs> getting it at zero rate of return, or even printing it like the United States or, 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 or Japan. So, how can we now, afford to go to Paris? <laughs> so, some of us can't. So, what we want to do is bring that exchange rate down, and that'll give us a chance for our export businesses and other businesses to actually make money so that they can reinvest in the industries and in fact keep our economy going at, at, at the rate it used to go back about 30 years ago. Can you explain that again? Thank you, Dr. 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 Accepted and the use of hemp is commercially viable. 
Cannabis reform advocates are not wowsers. <laughs> we want to drink too. <laughs> But we prefer to not break the law when we have a smoke. That's what politics is about. That's why I'm here tonight. Break the law. Getting enough of you, secret cannabis users. <laughs> to break the law into line with how people behave. And people behave like this. 15% of adult New Zealanders regularly use cannabis. <laughs> 400,000 people acknowledge that they use cannabis for pleasure and to relieve pain. Must be home-based research. <laughs> that should mean, that should mean, at least 50 of you here tonight. <laughs> I hope you do. As far as I'm concerned, the argument should be over. People have the right to use alcohol. Tax regulated and for adults. The same for tobacco and the same for fish. Cannabis has been used for centuries around the world. Now, in a growing number of countries, citizens have the right to medical marijuana and for personal use. Come for guess. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> they know what we know. Cannabis is a modern intoxicant and a medical miracle. <laughs> Jamaica, Florida, Portugal, USA, and many other countries around the world are relaxing cannabis laws. We should have the same choice. Cannabis is an election issue. Other political parties are starting to wake up. <laughs> is the only party that will stop making Kiwis criminals. Yes! But of course, I'd like to draw an electric book, but I'm not greedy. If you do, if you don't mind, if you really want one of these others to be your candidate in one of the central, please do. All I really ask them for is your party vote. Thank you. James Naki is the next on the list. James is from Social Democrats for Social Democrats. <laughs> and um, I asked him if Bruce Beatham was Zycom. He said he barely knew the man. But, but he did believe very strongly in the policies of Michael Joseph Savage. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> James Zoyo. I agree. The uh, the name is a bit of a mouthful, and uh, up until it was, uh, it was around 1986, 87, it was known as Social Credit, and that that is what uh, what the party is about. I'm not. I think a lot of people are wondering why the, Dem the Democrats' name, including people in the party, the main policy, which is a, the, the monetary policy, which is what social credit is about. But I think I'll, um, the, the policy that I bring up that seems to resonate most with people, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that first, and that's the universal basic income. <laughs> Um, there are there are some countries around the world that are well. There's a state in, in Canada. <laughs> Switzerland has recently introduced a, a universal basic income, and they've set it at a really high level, and they believe it's sustainable. And I believe it's sustainable too. Um, there is a whole lot of welfare that has been um, 
that, that's being administered right now and a whole lot of um, investigation on benefit fraud and a whole lot of other um, expenditure and bureaucracy that goes around the whole benefit system now that could be eliminated at one stroke. If we just gave everyone enough money to live on. And pot. <laughs> Who the hell wants pot? Think, think about, um, I, don't know, I don't know how many people here have been on the un unemployment benefit, but um, I, I think a few people know how debilitating it can be to be on the unemployment benefit and, hit, and be restricted from being working, from, from being able to work, because they can't... Um, because the, the, the benefit gets taken away from them. They have to go and find a full-time job to replace the benefit, and so that's a big, that can be a big barrier. <clears throat> and it can be, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a shameful thing to be on, a, on an unemployment benefit and not have a job. You get, and, and a whole lot of parties tend to talk down on, on, on these people and rubbish them. And that, that kind of doesn't improve any bond's life. So um, I, that, that's our first policy that I'm going to mention. The second one is uh, the the, uh, the financial transactions tax. Funny money? Yeah. <laughs> I'll get to that. <laughs> Funny money is what we have now. Funny money? We have, we have a whole lot of private banks who are creating money out of thin air and lending it to us and then taking the profit. Uh, but the... Uh, the financial transactions tax is a uh, is, is a tax that can be levied on on, on speculative uh, investment and on currency speculation and all, all of the stuff that's investment on investment that uh, derivatives trading all of that stuff that happens. There's five billion dollars of, of trade in the New Zealand currency every day. If we taxed one hundredth of one percent of that, we could replace GST and. The thing about taxes is that they are supposed to be used as an instrument to direct investment where it needs to go, and that's what the, the financial transactions tax is about. Then I've, I've got 30 seconds, so I'll just go straight to the, uh, the monetary policy, which is using the Reserve Bank to generate loans instead of private banks. And that's a, it's a very simple thing to do. Instead of all of the interest being paid out of the country, $12 million a day from the central government alone is paid to private banks. It's pure profit. Imagine if that was if stayed in the coffers, what, what that could be invested in. $4 billion was paid, was paid to Australian banks in, um, last year. that I'd tell you about a speech I'm going to give in three years' time. <laughs> I haven't decided what's in it yet. I haven't decided how long it is or anything like that, but you'll love it, honestly. <laughs> but uh, actually, I want to talk about the issues that matter, because that keeps being the phrase I hear during uh, the selection campaign. So I could talk to you tonight about the issues that matter to the woman I met at a street corner Where are the woman the other day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Lady Party, we've dealt with that. We'll have at least 45% of the interjection before anyone says how many people it's 45% of. Yeah. <laughs> the woman in Karori who I met on the street corner who said, I'm trying to raise my family of three children on the minimum wage 
14.75 an hour, and I said to her, you can't do that, we have to lift that minimum wage, we'll do that immediately. That's an issue that matters. Or the person who sleeps on the street out there every night because we don't provide enough emergency and social housing in Wellington, and we've got to do better, and we will. And there are issues that matter. Or the young families who I keep meeting who are struggling to put food on the table, who need the extra 60 bucks a week that we're going to give under the best start policy. That's an issue that matters, and Labor's going to do something about it. But I'm in the Arrow Valley Hall, and the only underside voter in the room tonight is Paul Foster Bell's campaign manager. <laughs> that matters to me. And that's that somehow or other it turns out that it's okay to use and abuse the information and knowledge you have as a minister or prime minister in this country to derail our democracy. And I know right around New Zealand people are saying, oh, we've had enough of this issue. Well, I have it. Because it fundamentally undermines our ability to do anything. And you know what? Apparently, it's unwise to leak the name and details of an innocent public servant who hasn't done anything, anything wrong. It was just his business car, for God's sake. <laughs> we found Jason Eid. <laughs> That's unwise. Unwise is a kebab in Courtney Place. <laughs> Morally wrong is leaking the name of a public servant who hasn't done anything wrong and they then get death threats. Yeah. Yeah. That is ethically and morally wrong. It is a constitutional outrage that we are not having an inquiry into the fact that someone in the Prime Minister's office, a senior advisor, not that man over there, lest there be a mob in a moment. <laughs> and Jason E actually participated in hacking another party's website and in leaking information about the SIS. John Key has got to be either the most lax minister for the SIS New Zealand has ever seen, or a liar. Oh, oh, oh. So ladies and gentlemen, I could go on a lot longer. <laughs> And I'm asking for your party vote for Labour because we have to do things differently. What we do has to be different and who we, and who we do it for has to be different. We have to work for all New Zealanders, not just Team Key. Party vote Labour. of salary earners have almost have more than doubled their incomes over the course of the last 20 years, while the bottom 90% have seen their incomes rise by less than 20%. The top 1% own 16% of all wealth in the country, and the bottom half 
less than 5% between them. In the time that we've had the Resource Management Act in place, 60% of our rivers have become unswimmable. We agreed that we would halve our carbon emissions below 1990 levels, and in the meantime, they have more than doubled. They've gone up 25% while the national government has been in place. They're expected to rise by another 50% over the course of the next 10 years. Our economy has become incredibly reliant on simple commodities, household debt to fund consumerism. This is not sustainable. It's not economically sustainable, it's not environmentally sustainable, it's not socially sustainable. Now I have no doubt that over the course of the next hundred years we will have worked out how to have a sustainable society and a sustainable economy. There's a hard way to get there and then there's an even harder way to get there. There might have been an easier way to get there if we'd made some different choices over the course of the last 20 years, but we didn't. Now, for all that Winston likes to make racist jokes about the Chinese, there are wise people and they've got a saying, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, and the second best time is today. So it is time. It is time to leave the coal and the hole and the oil deep under the sea. Yes. It's time. Put solar panels on the roof of your home, installed by your friendly local cooperative, RO Solar. It's pretty easy to lose your place with you lot. <laughs> it's time to clean up all of our rivers again, so that we can swim in them again. Yeah. on carbon emissions, so that we can start to reverse climate change. And then you can raise kids on again. Yeah. It's time to increase access to tertiary education with free public off to uh, free transport off peak blah blah, you get it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's time. And you know that. Because last election, 44% of you in the Arrow Valley gave the Greens your party vote. This was slightly disappointing because the Onakaka Town Hall in Golden Bay got 50.2%. So it's time to put more Green Party MPs into Parliament and for you to beat the Onakaka Town Hall. Economy. If you want a fairer society and a cleaner environment, then this year, in this election, please give your party vote to the Green Party, because that is what we stand for, and it is time. Thank you. 
So 
I mean, I've seen your head everywhere, John. <laughs> Walking down the road at the bullet track, and there's John Seven Head there. <laughs> and his Colin Craig was ice gouged out. Internet Martin tossed into the ditch. Anyway, people like Jackson and Arden, Harpak, and Jackson, um, Jackson, is it Fruin? Freeman, Jackson Freeman, big hands, they put Nash Paul signs back up and they deserve a round of applause. <laughs> now again, you put those up, Peter, Tom and, Peter and Tom and Dan put the Green Party signs back up. Yep. <laughs> yeah, with the cushy job around here. <laughs> and uh, hang on, I'll double get all your scrub. Who put your signs back up? Paul, Paul, Oliver? Yeah. Okay. But how come your sign was never chopped down? Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> never gone down. Oh, <laughs> So his first one was listening, he's standing because he wants to fix the economy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want a mic? Okay, where you go. Uh, the economy of New Zealand is dictated to by earthquake fault lines. <laughs> <laughs> Services will be government departments. Pick up microphones. Oh, 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 the economy of New Zealand is dictated to by earthquake fault lines, so therefore the central services will be government departments as of the 31st of March 1984. All public hospitals, rehabilitation centres, and state medical training societies are people. All public hospitals, rehabilitation centres and state training facilities, the 31st of March 1975 will be reinstated. Uh, also, uh, the, those on the social security benefits, the sickness benefit, invalid benefit, will only pay $3 for each prescription, other social security people $5, and the rest of the country, ten dollars maximum. Also, those on social security benefits who live in their own personal uh, residential house, seven eight of their land rate will be paid for by the New Zealand government. Those whose income is up to fifty six thousand four hundred dollars, one quarter of their land rate will be paid by the government. Um, the um, the you can't be retrospective. Huh? Thank you. Can't be retrospective. You don't make the nineteen eighty four. Anyway, compare it to what we got now, sir. <laughs> uh, the uh, there will be an inquisition in the deportation of substandard medical apparatus and drugs for those who just suffer from a chronic illness. First of these. 1st of April 1993 onwards. A very bad move. <laughs> but anyway, the uh, Local Bodies Act 
31st of March 1984 and that is because the rate players did not pay the debts of private companies and that refers to the people of the rate players of City of Wellington and Auckland who are paying the debts of the railway corporation. Give them a job at Crown Law, Grant. <laughs> 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 uh, the import duty for manufactured goods will be reinstated as of the 31st of March 1975. We need the people to uh, help in the in the event of a bad civil defense uh, situation, which unfortunately might happen in Christchurch. But it happen anywhere in New Zealand. Uh, the, oh, one, two, five, and the uh, current New Zealand flag will be the inside of New Zealand. There's uh, nothing wrong with it. <laughs>
thought I was going to say about the Conservative Party, and I'll tell you a little bit about where I live and what I do. <laughs> It doesn't help. Thank you, Paul. Come on, internet, Mark. 
Uh, yes, we absolutely would. Uh, and I just want to say that it's absolutely atrocious. We get 250. <laughs> 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 oh, yes, Alistair. <laughs> It's one of the Green Party's founding principles is the notion of consensus and reaching out and working across other parties. I'm just saying everybody's very difficult. There are no clever answers. I'm asking the people to work together to find some. I could just like to Thank you, Anne. Now, question for the floor. I have. Somebody over there. Yes. Black. I would like to Hang ask on. the candidates, would you support a Prime Minister who doesn't appear to know what's going on in his own office to run a country? <laughs>
Well, what are you going to do about the easy vote card? Because I don't think it's necessary. You can vote, with, you can vote without it. And so, it is true that you can vote without your easy, car, easy vote card, which is very important. After the last election, the National Party were trying to bring in uh, a change where you had to provide ID. This is, there was, no, it is absolutely true. Paul, that is what you tried to do. It was defeated in the select committee. The easy vote card can help people, but it's not necessary, and it, doesn't, it should never be compulsory. Yeah. Committee that reviewed that. Um, it is a useful administrative tool to help speed up the counting of votes. But you're right, New Zealand is a country where we don't have to show definitive photographic ID. Uh, we're among the few in the world that does that. Um, it does perhaps help with the ease of voting. So uh, that's Mr. certainly Chris, not that? something we were trying to promote. Joe, don't early vote early off early. Early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we believe in the longer term we should be developing uh, systems for online voting provided it can be possibly using blockchain technology that is coming out at the moment. No! <laughs> but in the meantime, there's nothing wrong with the easy book, I mean, you don't need it. But it's, it's there, so <laughs> but it would be incredibly marginal. So you can produce hydroelectric for three cents and the consumer is getting charged anywhere between 25 and 36 cents for that. So it's not actually the production of water where the cost uh, uh, lies. Why don't we stop paying for fluoride? No plans to shut You need transport anyway. Yeah, <laughs> 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 
said the actual cost of generation sorry, right? <laughs> <laughs> the actual cost of generation has not been reflected in what power companies do. NZ Power will set up a way in which consumers will actually end up paying less. And just so we've really got all the cards on the table, we also believe there should be a resource rental for large scale irrigation projects as well. <laughs>
Thanks for the question. Uh, 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 we're always doing that kind of stuff. You know, you're not just doing stuff for us. Yeah, I'm, I'm like the um, legalised cannabis. Oh, oh. Yes! heavily focused on cooperative social enterprises and other community level organisations. We're particularly interested in uh, community resilience and local in initiatives that uh, can that, you know, encourage self-sufficiency. It's a personal passion of mine. I actually spent most of the last three years working for the Akina Foundation, which is uh, supports social enterprise around New Zealand and working out of the Inspiral space, uh, well, spaces down uh, at the other end of town. So it is something that I want to champion uh, in the next parliament if I'm lucky enough to serve in it. Ladies, um, why, in your opinion, do you think that there's ten out of ten men candidates tonight and no females? What did you say? Yeah, I would bloody love to. <laughs> What is your party doing about the horrendous domestic violence rates in New Zealand? I think I answered the first part of the question earlier on when I said that the party has you know, dealt with this issue quite publicly. It's and called a man ban. We will have 45% of 45% isn't a quality! But in terms of the second part of your question, uh, which is a very important one, um, firstly that is an area where we do need to see more cross-party work. Uh, secondly, we need to fund again the NGOs properly who do the work uh, in this space, and we're going to do that. And then thirdly, we've got to make sure that we have an education campaign that's based particularly in focus towards men, and make sure that we take some responsibility for saying that this kind of violence is not okay. Can I absolutely accept that national is diverse in some areas, such as ethnically, we're a very diverse party. And <laughs> 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 but, and I, I absolutely accept the gender balance, balance with a long way to go there. But look, I want to address the domestic violence issue, which is My very, very serious, right and it's something that should be addressed yeah. in a, actually a deep politicised way, I believe. We should all work together. As what a cop out! What are you going to fucking do? Of, uh, services to support those who've been the victims of sexual violence. I think it's a huge cross agency effort. I think New Zealand still has a lot of work to do in terms of the sort of systemic and structural problems that we still have uh, in addressing equality um, in all kinds of areas. Um, in terms of domestic violence and those um, problems, we're willing to work with um, any other parties for uh, cross cross party solutions to these issues. Um, they they should not be partisan issues whatsoever. It's just um, piteous that this sort of stuff is allowed to go on in society. Um, so we're keen to work with whoever across the spectrum. Thank you. Well, to address your first part of the issue, I'd love a woman to stand up in this election, actually. But it's all good. <laughs> and actually, um, to address the second part of your issue, um, to address the second part of your question, 
at the moment we don't have any policies on <laughs> I personally do not like it. I'm fully. Question one was was about uh, gender diversity and gender factors. Yeah, well, well, we we have a pretty good gender balance in in, in social credit. If, uh, now, now, first on the party list, and the uh, and the leader is is a woman, and there are, there are quite a few women right at right at the top of the list, in the top ten. Um, and yeah, we, if if you want to join us, um, come see. <laughs> The Green Party has always been completely committed to gender equality since uh, we were founded. We have uh, gender balance co-leadership and it goes through the structures of the party. Um, I, I think it's an absolute cop-out that uh, parties say that, they, that it has to be merit-based. That is the most shocking uh, sort of betrayal of how you think when you say, um, yeah, you know, we'd, we'd like to get some more women but it has to be merit-based. And therefore, we're going to be 75% male. So, um, on, on, uh, on domestic violence, um, uh, it, it is shocking. You may have, you know that one of our MPs, uh, Jan Logie, has been doing a huge amount of work on this over the last few years. Should be free. Yay. I, 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 
I think um, there is a, you know, the, the biggest disadvantage that people have, well, the young people have these days is, is getting out of school <laughs> and having a crushing debt over their heads. So let's get rid of that. Right? Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, from my point of view, I mean, we can answer in a whole lot of ways. It actually starts really young. New Zealand is in breach of the, of the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. The question that we got asked before around poverty in particular, around access to health services and access to education. So if we're really going to talk about rights for young people, let's start at the beginning and make sure all children in New Zealand have some basic rights. So we're very focused on this issue. All the world research suggests the health of children is actually highly influenced from investment that goes from free conception to the age of three. So we are focused very much on that. We're going to have free health care for all New Zealand children. Doctors visits and prescriptions up there to people. So that in fact that everybody in the country, especially the young cats, will actually have jobs. And, and that's pretty important. We also want to see the minimum wage go up so that uh, if you do get into work, then you will have some money to spend. Yeah. Callum? Um, first and foremost, we're going to uh, bring a representation and an understanding into Parliament of the digital spaces in which young people gather, which I think is vital <laughs> when we're talking about uh, planning public services uh, and all of these sorts of issues. Um, secondly, we're going to fight for a free and open internet, which I think is the freedom of speech issue for our age and particularly affects young people who... Um, have more and more of their understanding of the world. Yeah, uh, subsidised. <laughs> 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 already doing that. Yeah, well, uh, I, I believe that uh, you know there's um, should be free education. Uh, to yes! education yes! Yes! And, and that it should be accessible to all. Just so we we hear that um, the education system that it, uh, can help anyone would be a benefit to everyone. society that we live in, that is going to be virtually impossible. So um, I, I think that it would be better if, they, if we spoke to the young people then then come up with some ideas. Well, I'll be having this myself. The reason I stood up is because I was really appalled at last election and how many young people didn't stand up and vote for their own choice. Stand up, have a vote, and their say. Gentlemen with the grey jacket. <clears throat> On the West Coast, does your party support the workers or the slugs and the snails? <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're looking against them. What do is call any of them feral That's or right. scum and then have a Prime Minister support the person who says all of those words. Oh, so rubbish. Perhaps you'd like to take back to the National Party oh. that West Coasters are good, decent New Zealanders. And why don't you support them then? By someone who John Keyes You voted against it. Both the workers and maintaining the How many lives have been lost? Um, this is a case of 
unfortunately, what is going to the opportunity for there. And uh, unfortunately, this is the case with the government department and the people of Florida. They were got to 1975. What is this election about? I believe it's about who is going to be in charge of the rank and pillage of this country. And so, I don't think I can do work in the West Coast, but I have watched that you people have taken all the gold of our land. You've taken all the coal, everything that used to be things that we don't really treasure. Look. <laughs> cross-party consensus that um, superannuation has been a political football um, and it is a huge demographic challenge that's going to really disrupt this country in the coming decades and we've got to get consensus on it that's going to last governments of the right, governments of the left across multiple decades. This is the short health and safety interlude. Those people who want to turn the heat pump off, the control is on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> right, this, this is, the, uh, the universal basic income is, is effectively lowering the age of entitlement for super to 18. <laughs> Basically, it's giving everyone enough to live on. idea to leave it as it is, but unfortunately, it has stated a very bad uh, civil disaster might be, might be forced to be increased by, what, five years at least. Yes. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, in answer to the second question, the answer is absolutely no, we don't want the testing, and that drives the answer to the first question, which is we want to keep superannuation universal. We believe that in order to be able to do that, we have to slowly and progressively increase the age from 65 to 67. Yay. And doing so, what we have to do is also understand that there are a lot of people who struggle at the moment to work to 65. We have to make sure that there are extensions in place to manual workers in particular. In regards to the raising of the age for the uh, superannuation, uh, I, I was thinking more that it should come down because the yeah. who are dying at 60, 62, 
And they don't even get the gold card. So yeah. And means testing, well, you, you can't means test our people because they've got no means. <laughs> Actually, we're committed to keeping superannuation at 65 because if we maintain a strong and growing economy as National has done, we can afford it. And it's the right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> the first policy is to keep the age at 65 and certainly to keep it universal. Uh, we believe that uh, the country should be able to make enough money to pay for that. And uh, so that's our position, basically, the status quo. Thank you. Callum? But, um, we don't currently have policy in this area, but you're welcome to contribute to our policy. Crowd sources are super. Um, thanks. Well, well, thank you, Brian. I need questions from a woman in the front here. Most of the places where Wellingtonians go to swim in the summer. How to pull it. What are you going to do about it? So cleaning up our rivers and cleaning up our beaches is actually one of the three main priorities of the Green Party in this election. Um, in, in relation to uh, to beaches, we'd like to prohibit off you know risky deep sea uh, oil drilling off our coasts. We think that presents a huge. <laughs> A, a network of protected riverways uh, in New Zealand, which would be similar to the protections that uh, our, our national um, parks have in place. So I, I, there's actually a staggering amount of stuff that we've got on, on exactly this uh, to do with water quality, so I'd be happy to give you the full package. Do you think the the Social Credit Party is the third oldest party in New Zealand and in 1973 they had a green policy that they published. Uh, when the Green Party formed, they pretty much took, they took the Green Party policy and, and, and sorry, the, they took the, the policy from, from uh, Social Credit and moved on from there. We, we are very committed to the environment and it, it easily as much as the Green Party is. The, we, uh, our environment is our future, our waterways and our beaches are, are an investment in, in our future. We, we need to protect them and we need to spend money. Mm -hmm. In the city of Wellington, it's literally the local bodies who are responsible for the local water supply. But being the, being the seawater, it's sort of could come under the uh, New government. So um, we, we absolutely support um, making sure that we clean up all the beaches, rivers, lakes and streams in New Zealand within a generation. We've spent two generations um, destroying them. It's going to take some time to do that. There is an element of this that is about the regional council and to get really pointy-headed at a Wellington Central meeting, we desperately need a proper national policy statement on the management of water and fresh water in particular. Um, we need to strengthen it so it's proper. So there's your point to get the policy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, we have watched our rivers and uh, we have watched our sea, sea waters uh, become increasingly polluted over the last 20 years or so. And, and so, you know, your question is very important there. I have hoped that I could get in there and across a, a cross party uh, process, we are talking. Well, under nine years of the previous government, there was absolutely no national policy statement grant, so the one we've got now is actually pretty good. We're committing to spend $100 million to make sure there's better than nothing isn't good enough. of rivers and waterways. But the fact is, there are 450,000 kilometres of waterways in New Zealand from our absolutely beautiful, stunning rivers, culverts, ditches, and channels. We support a, a moratorium on all deep sea oil drilling um, as well as oil. <laughs> It's about moving away from uh, these kinds of primary industries and towards uh, a cleaner, greener, smarter digital economy. <laughs>
something that we all have in common, that, we, that the Greens have uh, they've added and finely tuned their policy in terms of the environment to a high degree. And they need to be committed. The all parties are also committed, uh, although they may not have developed the formula. that one off. So, <laughs> it's, it, is one, it is one of our top priorities. Um, we would like to replace the emissions trading scheme, which is dysfunctional and we're actually paying people to pollute uh, under that scheme. We want to replace it with a very simple, clear, transparent $25 a tonne uh, charge on carbon and recycle all of the revenue to you in the form of a tax cut on the first $2,000 of your income and lower the company tax by uh, 20... That's on, five sorry, times the world price. So... Yes, top priority, and one of the reasons I'm most excited at this election is that we might actually get a chance to implement something like that. Thank you. 